Hello, this is Mr. Milani, and this video will teach you to convert units using the butterfly method. Now, before we begin, um, if you have any intention of uh, pursuing college degree using science or engineering or math, I strongly encourage you to transition away from the butterfly method into kind of the the math method of uh, multiplying by conversion factor where you, you basically multiply by a top number divide by the bottom in other words the way every video out there teaches you how to do this at this level but I understand that for some of you who just want to get through chemistry and have no future plans in science you want to stick with what you know and that will um, be the butterfly method for for you and so you can do that if you need to and here's how to do it in a way that will always let you get to the right answer all right so the butterfly method basically just takes its uh, name from the shape of a butterfly and what we see here is that it is going to be kind of a relationship one is to two as three is to our unknown and then the math that you would then do would be to multiply the two numbers you know and then divide by the number that's attached to the unknown diagonally uh, to get your answer for your unknown. And I understand this method. It works. Um, it has limitations in the long run. But again, if you're not pursuing science or engineering, you can get by with it. And it makes sense. All right. So... If you insist on pursuing it this way, uh, what I would like you to do is focus on the units as, as you look at a conversion. The numbers uh, can change and the units are really the key. Um, the thing to focus on is the fact that the same units must be on the same rows. And this would be where if one is to two is three is to four. One and three must have the same unit and then two and four would have the same unit. Let's assume that your unknown is on the bottom. It's either two or four. Your unknown then would have the same unit as the one on its row in that, like so. All right, so in order to do any conversion, we need one thing, and that is something that's definitive that says, hey, a certain amount of this unit is equal to a certain amount of that unit. Let's make that specific. Examples of this would be that uh, one foot equals 12 inches or a thousand milliliters equals one liter. We need that fact uh, to do any conversion. And the thing about this and recognize about this is that these numbers don't change. One foot by definition equals 12 inches. A thousand milliliters by definition equals one liter. So that ratio or that relationship is always the same, regardless of, of how we're going to use that relationship. All right. So how do we set the, the uh, conversion? Uh, we're given a problem. How many inches in 12 feet or two feet? Um, simple math. You could probably do it in your head. Uh, the reason I chose this is so that we don't have to focus on the math. Let's focus on setting up the problem. All right, so one foot equals 12 inches. That's the, the, the fact relationship we need to know going to do this conversion. And then we just say, well, one foot is to 12 inches as two feet is to our unknown X. And the key things here, again, I want you to do this one quick little momentary error check of looking to make sure that you have the same units on the same row and doing that will prevent you from making a dumb mistake now i'm a very casual guy i made a lot of these dumb math mistakes and i have learned the hard way to take this moment of double check to make sure i'm doing it right it prevents you from multiplying when you should divide. It prevents you from dividing when you should multiply. In other words, it prevents you from making a dumb mistake. And it's real quick and simple. 
and I'd add it to your to your process as soon as possible because I promise you, you'll catch yourself before you make a dumb mistake by doing this. All right, the next thing to know is that our unknown x is going to have the exact unit of what's on its row. So our final answer will be in inches, and that's good because that's what we're asked, asked for. All right, so let's do the math for this uh, once again. Uh, one foot equals 12 inches, and we're asked how many inches are in two feet. So we're going to say that one foot is to 12 inches as two feet is to x inches. Well, what we're going to do is take the two things we know and divide by the one that's diac, which is one part of the butterfly. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, take a look at this. Uh, take that moment to verify that uh, we have feet and feet on the same row. That's our error check. And now we're going to take the two numbers we know um, diagonally, cross multiply and divide in, this, in quick short words phrasing, uh, but basically 2 times 12. And then that number is going to be divided by the other number we know, 1 foot, to get our answer. And so 2 times 12 divided by 1 is 24 inches. Now, if you had said 24 is the answer, I would mark it wrong. And I hope every other teacher would mark it wrong because the answer is 24 inches. Now, the inches is not canceled. The, you see how we have feet and feet both on the same row? They're going to cancel each other out, and they're going to make each other disappear. So inches is not canceled out. So therefore, it's going to carry over and become our new unit. So that's what a conversion is. We've converted from 2 feet to 24 inches, from feet to inches. That's essentially all any conversion is. It's going to be the same value. It's the same distance. It's just a different number of units, or a different unit. Therefore, it's a different number. All right. So let's try something with chemistry. All right, so in chemistry, the fact is that one mole of carbon equals 12 grams. Now, we can get this fact from the periodic table, and most of the time that you're going to reference the periodic table will be to get the average atomic mass so that you can do a gram to mole or mole to gram conversion, especially in the second semester of chemistry. Um, so uh, this is given to us from the periodic table, and... So we're just gonna, the question then to you is, how many grams are in 2.2 moles of carbon? So once again, we'll do the setup where one mole of carbon is to 12 grams as 2.2 moles of carbon is to our unknown. Now we're going to take a second, verify that moles of carbon is on the same row. They are. And so now... We can take a look. Our un Ooh, this is out of order. Sorry. Uh, basically, we'll take our 2.2 uh, grams, 2.2 moles times 12, which is, and then divide it by x times 1. So 2.2 moles times is 24.4 grams. Moles will cancel. Yeah, there's the missing one. That should be up at the top. Sorry. Um, all right. Next, let's do another example. Uh, if you have 762 grams of silicon, then how many moles is that? So here it's a, a little more difficult. Um, we look at the periodic table, and we see that a mole of silicon is 28 grams. All right. Now, a key thing to remember, and just kind of burn that in your brain, is that every time you look at the periodic table, and to get a gram, you're looking at the average atomic mass, which is underneath the, the symbol SI, in this case, or any chemical, chemical or element, um, we're always talking about one mole. So burn into your head that every time you go into the periodic table to get grams, you're always thinking about one mole of that element. So, all right. So I would like you to pause and solve this on your own. And then after you get an answer, unpause it, and you can then uh, double check your answer with mine to make sure that you got it right. So please pause, and when you come back, we'll get the answer. All right, so hopefully you paused. Here we go. Basically, 762 is to X, as 28 is to 1 mole, 28 grams. Take a look, moment to verify grams are on the same row. They are. 
Notice my unknowns on the left. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter where your unknown is as long as your units are on the same row. Cross multiply 762 times 1 divided by 28. You get the final answer of 27 moles. Cool. Now, um, why we focus on units? Well, 1 foot is to 12 inches. 2 feet is to x to get an answer 24. This is the first example we did. Here's the second example we did. Um, and really, this is just as I said, by focusing on the units, it doesn't matter where our unknown ends up. Um, if our units are across from each other, our unknown x can be on the left, it can be on the right, it can be on the top, it can be on the bottom, it doesn't matter. Bill Murray will explain this to you. No, not this time. I'll have him explain it to you in another video. Um, so, but the unknown can be in any of these four locations as long as um, your units are in the same row. All right, so here we're going to go with the hardest, well, hard, pretty darn hard one, um, conversion. So if you've got three grams of uh, gold, which is AU on the periodic table, then how many gold atoms are present? And uh, if you look at a periodic table, it tells you that a mole of gold is 197 grams. And we know that by definition, just as one dozen is always equal to 12 of something, one mole is always equal to 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd atoms, in this case, gold atoms. So I'd like you to pause now, or if you are completely flummoxed, you well, pause it, and if you can't figure it out, come back, I'll give you a hint. Um, and then after the hint, I'll have you pause, and then you can give that a shot. But all right, so hint time. The hint is that you have to do two conversions to get to the answer. You can't get there in one because you cannot go from the number of grams of something to the number of atoms because, uh, let's take it a different way. If you had 100 pounds of bowling balls, you'd have like 10 of them. But if you had 100 pounds of ping pong balls, you'd have, what, 1,000, 2,000? I don't know how many, a lot. You'd have a ton more of them than bowling balls. And it's the same way with atoms and elements. Some of them weigh it a lot more than others. Gold is 197 grams per mole. Hydrogen is only one gram per mole. It's tiny compared to gold. So grams can't get to atoms. What we have to do is do two conversions. And that's why you have those two things that I gave you. One mole of gold equals 107 grams. So we can go from grams to moles. And it's only when we have moles that we can then go to atoms. So there are your two conversions. So when you unpause, well, I guess pause it, try to do it now, and then unpause it, and you'll see how to do it. All right. Here we go. <clears throat> so first we'll say one mole of gold is 197 grams. And then that's the same as X number of moles if you have three grams. Cross multiply and divide. And you get three grams times one mole divided by 197 grams, which is 0 0.015 moles. This is common to get decimal points for these things. So don't freak out about that either. That's no big deal. Trust the process. Trust your... Math, trust yourself. All right, now we have 0 0.15 moles. Well, let's say one mole is to 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd atoms as 0 0.015 moles is to x. And I'd take a moment to verify that moles are in the same row. And now again, just cross, multiply, and divide. 0 0.015 times 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd divided by 1. And we get our final answer of 9.17 times 10 to the 21st atoms. So um, those of you um, who are interested in significant figures, please recognize one thing that a conversion is considered to be exact. So conversions never change your sig figs. Now, if, if everything I've just said to you is confusing, you can just ignore this. This is a side note for those who are pushing on to sig figs or who know about significant figures. 
Um, but if you know about significant figures, you really should be doing it the other way. So that's the other thing I'll say there. In this case, we started with three grams, one sig fig. Our answer should have one sig fig. So the sig fig answer would be nine times 10 to the 21st atoms. All right, back to the end. That's it, folks. The end. Good luck. Everything from now is just practice. This is why teachers give you worksheets, not to uh, keep you busy, but because we know that we didn't learn this until we practiced. And, and don't view worksheets as busy work. View them as ways to get good at it. Uh, and if you know me, you know I don't give you busy work. So just grind. Good luck.